Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, getting stuck with dealing with traffic is not great. That's why I'm here. I figured that around this time, you know, I'm either here or I'm not. I just spent around an hour reading though. I could have done that in the car. But since I'm doing streaming out loud and stuff, that's a, it's different. I gotta actually be stationed here instead of do one in the bottom and stuff. Yeah. And it even makes me wonder if I actually read up more on being out and about reading if I actually miss a stream than when I'm streaming. But then again, I'm not reading out loud, so that's a difference. So, anywho, I might as well go back and try to read, reread as much as I can. Pretty much ended from radio talk and talking about cinema. What is it talk? Talking about James Bond cars and something like that, and how car culture is related, related to that. Not much to cars and lifestyle. So I, I could talk more about that. Um, besides that, probably in part three, I could actually finish this page, wiki page and then summarize everything. But a further ado, Cars and popular culture it talks about each country in the United States, Europe, and just cinema and radio. But anywho, let's now talk about just cars as a lifestyle. Over time, the car has evolved beyond being a means of transportation or status symbol and into a subject of interest and a cherished lifestyle amongst many people in the world who appreciate the cars for their craftsmanship, their performance, as well as the vast arrays of activities one can take part in with his or her car. People have who have a keen interest in cars and or participate in the car hobby are known as car enthusiasts. Quote, quote, car enthusiasts. International Sab Club meeting in Lafayette. La 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 yeah, I, I butchered the country's name. One major aspect of the hobby is collecting. Cars, especially classic vehicles, are appreciated by their owners as having aesthetic, recreational, and historic value. Classic cars. Oh man, an old Ford card. A vintage card is, in the most general sense, an old animal automobile. The automobile. Automobile, and in the narrow senses of car enthusiasts and collectors, it is a car from the period of 1919 to 1930. Such enthusiasts have categorization schemes for ages of cars that enforce distinctions between antique cars, vintage cars, classic cars. This is a classic vehicle, so. This will be under vintage vehicles instead of classic, but it's still part of the wiki page. So, yeah, you'll get the gist of it. Such demand generates investment potential and allows some cars to command extraordinary high prices and become financial instruments in their own right. 
A second major aspect of the car hobby is vehicle modification, as many car enthusiasts modify their cars to achieve performance improvements or visual enhancements. Many subcultures exist within the segment of the car hobby. For example, those building their own custom vehicles, primarily appearance based on original examples of reproductions of pre-1948 U.S. car market designs and similar designs from the World War II era and earlier from elsewhere in the world are known as hot rodders, while those who I believe should stay true to their own original designs and not be modified as known as purists, quote quote, hot rodders. Hot rods are typically clock, oh, no. Specifically, old, classic, or modern American cars that have been rebuilt or modified with large engines modified for more speed and acceleration. I had hot rods, pretty much from Hot Wheels. <laughs> now let's look at Pierce. Wicked Pierce. Interesting. Let me see what's up there. Oh, uh, okay. Wicked Dictionary. Hmm. A weird hyperlink they have. Okay, in addition, motorsport, both professional and amateur, as well as casual driving events where enthusiasts from around the world gather to drive and display their cars are important pillars of the car hobby as well. Notable examples such events are the annual Malay Miguel Classic Car Rally and the Gumball 3000 Supercar Rally. Am I pronouncing this right? The Mille Miguel was an open road motor sport endurance race established in 1927 by the young Counts Francisco Mazzotto and Yomo Maggi, which took place in the Italy 24 times from 1927 to 1957, I believe. Yeah, okay. Many car clubs have been set to facilitate social interactions and championships among those who. Take pride in owning, maintaining, driving, and showing their car. Oh, sharing their cars. Many prestigious social events around the world today are centered around the hobby. A notable example is the Petal Beach Concours del Allegiance Classic Car Show. <laughs> Classic Car Show. Oh, now we're under dedicated infrastructure. So this is all. Um, places that are solely for cars and you can say only cars without cars they have no purpose to exist hmm so dedicated infrastructure let me hydrate so I can say everything in rapid succession Dedicated infrastructure, automobile repair shop, car ferry, controlled access highway, crash barrier, diner, drive through drive-in theater, filling station, garage, residential, motel, parking lot, retail park, roadside zoo, rest area, safari park, taxi rink. Huh, what is, well, let's go with controlled access highway, oh, okay, so that's what it is, big highways is a type of highway that has been designed for high speed vehicular traffic with all traffic flow ingress and egress regulated, okay, huh, wait, commonly English terms are freeway, motorway, and expressway, oh, okay, so this is a, type of freeway or control access highway now you have crash barrier which is these blocks or actually no these rails interesting yeah you have the diner let me see a diner is a small restaurant found predominantly in the northeastern southeastern and midwestern United States hmm I'm I don't know. I, I sort of have to agree. I you you see a lot of diners in the West Coast. 
even in the northwest because a lot of truckers that usually go from um was it the northern california norcal oregon washington and up to canada there's a lot of diners that usually truckers usually map out but you can go to regularly and and with diners there's also popular diners that still exist in urban cities like in nyc new york city which which yeah i am fascinating how this considered a dedicated infrastructure even though even though they they can still live without cars or even cars in one area my guess is that for diners so diners existed after the invention of a bar and bars became a flourishing when people can't go to saloons because of prohibition because that was a common place where people usually would drink in saloons but but you know alcohol was banned because prohibition in the united states and people went to speakeasies which had bars in order to quickly serve people along with um with it being a bit cheap so afterwards when prohibition was gone people tend to still um go to the speakeasies when it became pretty much public and started expanding into just bar areas and with that and with bars you know it became easier for people to actually sell other things besides alcohol and you know you have pretty much diners that, that copy some of that model so 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 yeah <laughs> maybe it just became very popular because of um suburbia plazas or small towns uh having restaurants along with drive throughs that you know you do need people but you know if you're me i could just walk up to a drive through and still order something because i'm just hungry and you know wendy's was closed but i'm like oh my god i still want to get these the drive throughs open so let me get with these that drive-in theater, oh boy, I can't imagine watching Tenet in the theater, especially with no subtitles. Yeah, that's a bit of a hassle. It is a form of cinema structure consisting of a large outdoor movie screen and projection booth, a concession stand, and a large parking area for automobiles. It's also interesting why dr drive-in theaters was well, a bit of a fad. They still exist, but it, it's a bit of a fad because well, less, more pe less people uh didn't take cars everywhere but you know that goes to show that people uh don't always want to be in their vehicles there's also healing stations so these are just gas shops what 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 is this a spaceship is, is this in the path but area 51 a building station is a facility that sells fuel engine lubricants for motor vehicles this is this is weird. <laughs> I love this one. A skull shoal filling station in operation since 1935 in Copenhagen, Denmark. Ah, oh, interesting. Now, let's go with motels. I did not know that, but come to thinking about it 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 has actually houses that are nearby a parking lot yeah it, it makes perfectly sense never thought about that now there's also parking lots yep yeah. roadside zoos that's something i haven't heard about a zoo is a facility okay yeah Oof, whatever let see blankets see something real quickly okay your area safari parks yeah, i actually went to that now taxi rank what is that oh, okay it's a queue area on a street or private property where taxi cabs line up to wait passenger so pretty much taxis waiting in the airport 
Roadside zoos. Okay, let me see quickly. Are found throughout North America, particularly in remote locations. They are often small for-profit zoos, often intended to attract visitors, such as a gas station. The animals may be trained to perform... Tra oh, okay. So small zoos that are... It's a park. I went to alligator one before. And crocodile, because they had to do... And other reptilians. But any of it. I'll probably say that next time. Other than that, see ya.